So last week, we learned about logarithms and exponentials, and we learned a lot of useful properties, of both logarithms and exponentials. Today, we're going to put, start putting that knowledge to work. Now, we're not going to be able to get through this entire lesson in one day. We're going to continue this tomorrow. Where is? Okay. All right, anyway. So, our object so today's lesson is about logarithmic and exponential equations. Sorry about the delays. Objective. That students will be able to solve equations involving and exponentials. Okay. Okay, so before we dive into the actual process, let's just very quickly remind ourselves of what it actually means to solve an equation. So first, what are the solutions to an equation? The solutions, the smart group. The solutions to the equation are the numbers we 
in plugin to make it true. What do I mean by true? Well, an equation, an equal sign, an equation is two expressions with an equal sign in the middle. To make it true means the numbers we can plug in that would get us, so when you plug numbers into an expression, we'll simplify it to a number, we need the number to be the same. In other words, we need the equation to be balanced. Okay, cool. And solving an equation is the process of finding those solutions. Okay, fantastic. So now that we just have our basic basics down, and this is stuff that you should all know before, but I find it's always, it's generally pretty useful to refresh people's memories on this particular topic. Okay, will no one yell at me if I take this away? So now what about work solving with exponentials and logs? Now there are two main tools. When solving exponential or logarithmic equations. The first tool is the one to one property. And this is a property that all one-to-one -one functions have, but a one-to-one -one function is a function with an inverse. It passes the horizontal line test. So, if we have Two exponentials of the same base. So if b to the u power equals b to the v power, then u equals v. Pretty straightforward.
property also applies for logarithms. Okay. Basically, if we know that two exponentials or logarithms have the same base, and they themselves have the same value, so they're, you know, they both equal each other, that means that the insides must also be equal. Pretty straightforward. Other property. The other property is the fact that logarithms and exponentials can change forms between each other. A logarithm of base with base b of u will equal v. So let's just remind ourselves what this actually means. This means that if I have this means that this logarithm is really asking is b to the b to the what power will give me u? Well, v will. So b to the v power equals u. So if you have a logarithm, you can rewrite it. As b to the v equals u. Okay. The properties of exponentials and logs can also be used. I guess we should say R. Uh, R also R. Okay, take a moment, get these down.
Okay. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay, let's go ahead and try an example. We'll start by tr we'll start by working with the one to one property, and we'll look, start by looking at some basic examples, and then we'll get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's start with a fairly simple example. Let's solve four to the x plus two equals four to the three minus a four x. I just made this up off the top of my head. Okay. Well, we know for the one-to-one -one property, we have two, these two exponentials with the same base. They both have base four, which means that these exponents must be equivalent. And this is from the one to one property. Okay. Well, now what? Well, now it just is a regular old boring linear equation. We can tack handle this in our sleep. Let's see, we need to get all, we need to gather up all the x terms on one side all the non-x terms on the other. I guess I'll go ahead and add a 4x to both sides. Back to 2 from both sides. Cancel. Cancel. x plus 4x is 5x. 3 minus 2 is 1. By both sides. Or, oh, let's see. Now we have 5x equals 1. Now we can divide both sides by 5. And we get equals fifth. 
really very, it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, now I'd like you to try one yourself. Will anyone yell at me if I erase this? Okay, how do you try it yourself? Okay, I would like you to solve the log of x squared plus four equals log of 20 using the one-to-one -one property. We should be able to do this, I'm gonna say within a minute and a half. Be able to try yourself. All right. So the one-to-one -one property states that the contents of these two logs is the same. All right, cool. So that means that now we'll have x squared plus four equals 20. And now at this point, we have something, something we can handle. Subtract four from both sides. 20 minus four, that is 16. X squared equals 16. 
All right. Find the square root of both sides. Zippity, zippity. Radical, a little bit too radical there. Zippity, zippity. The square root of x squared is x. And what's the square root of 16? Y is 4. I did see some people in the private chat actually put that down. They did miss a little bit of a detail, though, because the square root of 16, strictly speaking, isn't just 4. The square root is asking what number times itself gives us 16, and 4 times 4 is indeed 16. But so is negative 4 times negative 4. That is also simple. This actually has two solutions, 4 and negative 4. And if you plug both of these into the original, then you'll find that they will indeed be balanced. 4 squared plus 4 is 20. Negative 4 squared plus 4 is 20. Log of 20 equals the log of 20. So really, the one-to-one -one property is pretty easy to work with. OK, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? All right. OK, so that was, that was an easy example. Now let's try a little bit of a tougher one. Okay, now let's go ahead and try one that's a little bit nastier. So 20 times 1 half to the x over 3 power equals 5 using the 1 to 1. Well, right away, we have a bit of a problem. The one-to-one -one property doesn't work. The one-to-one -one property only works when we have an exponential equals exponential of the same base. Cool. Problem? This right side is not an exponential of base one-half. So that doesn't work. For that matter, the left side isn't really an exponential of base one-half either because it has this 20 messing things up. So what we need to do, we need to rewrite it into a form where the one-to-one -one property is useful. So that's really our first step. OK, so we can't. This rule isn't 20 times b to the u equals b to the v. We should get, get rid of this 20.
multiply both sides by 20. Okay, now we have 5 twentieths. Uh, that can simplify out to 1 fourth. So now we have 1 half to the x thirds power equals 1 fourth. Okay, cool. Now, at least we don't have that 20 messing things up anymore, but the right side still isn't written as an exponential with 1 half as the base. But it can be. One half times one half is a fourth, isn't it? One half times itself. One times one is one, two times two is four, so one half squared is a fourth. Fantastic. That means that we can replace this one half with, or with this one fourth with one half squared. All right, and now, This is something we can work with. Okay, take it from here. I'll give you about 30 seconds. All right, these both, so the one-to-one -one property means that both of these exponentials, or both of these exponents are equal to each other. So we have, rewrite it as x over three equals two. Cool beans. Multiply both sides by three. Cancels the denominator there. And we have x equals six. Isn't that nice? So by rewriting it so that by rewriting it into a form useful for the one-to-one -one property, we were able to solve this thing that started out looking so horrible. Okay, so that's the one-to-one -one property. Let's see how much time we got left. We've got da, 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 15 minutes. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's time. Okay, so will anyone yell at me if I take this away? I guess I'll just use the thing again. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try the uh, change to exponential form tool.
I would like you to change, or let's go ahead and solve log of x squared equals 2 by changing its form. Okay. So let's take a look here. So the trick is to change it over to an exponential form. Now, what will that actually do for us? Well, you'll see in a minute. So our base, uh, oh, what base does this have? What is the base of this logarithm? Base 10. So, using this property, that means that we can rewrite this as 10 to the second power equals our inside there, which is x squared. Let's take it from there. So 10 squared, of course, is 100. Take the square root of both sides. We have x equals 10, although also have x equals negative 10 as well. There we go. Easy enough. So when you solve it, when you change some, solve it by changing into ex, changing to exponential form or changing from exponential to logarithm form, what you're generally doing is you're trying to just make it so you don't have an x inside of a logarithm or an x as an exponent anymore. You're not necessarily turning it into something that just you won't necessarily always have something that gives you a nice whole number answer, but that's okay. Your main goal is just to make it so you don't have an X inside of a logarithm or inside of Okay. Now, I'd like you. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and create one more for you to try. One, or one for you to try yourself. May I erase this? One deal and have me not to. So I would like you to solve the equation log base two of x by changing it into exponential four. Give it a try.
Okay. So, using the property, we can replace, replace this with 2 to the fifth power equals the inside here, which is x. Well, now this is a really simple equation to solve because it's already solved. We already have x on its own. We don't have any extra work. Two to the fifth power is two times two times two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. 16, 32. No problem, Bob. Okay. Let's see how much time we got left. Uh, yeah, five minutes. Okay. Let's we have time for one. Now this time we're going to change from exponential to logarithm. Let's say we have three times five to the negative x over four power equals 15. Okay. Now I know this looks horrible, but it's actually not as bad as it looks. Now, first of all, you really should be rewriting this so that it's exponential equals thing. So we need to get rid of this three. Divide both sides by three. And we get five, the negative x over four power. Five. Now, first of all, from here, by far the easiest way to solve this would actually not be to change it to logarithm form. Five is five to the one power. So I could rewrite this as negative x over four equals one. Multiply both sides by four, divide by negative one, and we would get x equals negative four. There we go. We're done. But let's change it to logarithm, a logarithm form, just in the name of trying it out. So in logarithm form, our base would be 5. The inside of it, of our logarithm, ooh, would be 5. And it would equal negative x over 4. So we would have log base 5 of 5 equals negative x over 4. Multiply both sides by 4. And we have, oh, let's multiply both sides by negative 4. Now we have negative 4 times log base 5 of 5. Well, what exponent would we need to give 5 in order to get 5? One. So this is really negative four times one equals x, which is negative four. So we have x equals negative four. And our and there we go.
All right. So with that, now I know that we're a few minutes early, but that's about what we wanted to cover today. Tomorrow we'll look at these in more detail. We'll look at a more complicated changing problem. And we'll also look at, you know, we'll also, you know, dive into this topic in greater detail. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, one more thing. Um, uh, I, I know that I told you guys that I would be doing parent-teacher conferences today, but we're having training after during the afternoon today. Uh, I just forgot that it was scheduled today because we usually have training on Wednesdays. So, uh, so my my so my parent-teacher time will be tomorrow from one to four. I already sent out a message in student view and parent view, but I uh, wanted to. Uh, all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.